but not completely. Cut corner. How about if we sell the land to a what? Gentile and buy it back for one year. That was called the law of Chete. Write it down. <coughs> H-E-T. Chete. H-E-T. E-R. Chete. <coughs> which is very interesting because the, the, the root word... <laughs> The root word of het there is the Hebrew word chet. What is the Hebrew word chet? Sin. So they came up with a rule, chet there, where the Gentiles during Shemitah would work the land, would farm the land, and they, wouldn't, and they would still have their work, and they would still have their produce, and they would still have all the products they got, that they had in the past for the six years. Does that sound like an attitude of Teshua? Does that sound like an attitude of repentance? No, it does not. Okay. Well, well, well. Check this out. Having an honest Israelite like work your land or your home or your business in place, in your place. Well, I'm a manager at Burger King, but I'm going to observe Shemitah, so I'll just hire a non Israelite. He'll do the managing for one year and then I'll come back. Sorry. No, we're not. That's the attitude that God has kicked out to Babel. No faith. Rest means no one runs your business. Now, that's trust. When you can trust Yahweh and that there will be no loss of income. That's trust. Don't talk about trust. That's trust. I, I don't know. If, I'm not there yet. This is very challenging. But someone's got to break the pattern. Okay, so don't go home and, and, and say, well, does Rabbi do it? Don't, don't let the devil play with your head. That's not the message. No, Rabbi does, has never done it before. And maybe that's part of the reason I've got to deal with certain situations the way I'm dealing with them now and having to send people for counseling and to other things that I don't approve of, that don't sit well with me, that bother me. Because maybe I've never been willing to break the pattern of my forefather. This is perfect timing. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Baruch Hashem On the other hand, listen, there are more and more farmers today who are now starting to keep a total rest, Shemitah, of the land Shabbat. It has been reported that among those orthodox, now don't miss this now, among the orthodox farmers, unlike the, those of the 1800s who, didn't, who were looking for escape clauses, that among those who are fully observing the, Shab the Shemitah, having been fully observing, not hiring Gentiles, but for a year, right? It has been reported that in the sixth year, while preparing for the sabbatical, an unusual supply of provision unfolded. In one testimony, it was reported among farmers that olive trees produced 800 times more than previous years. These are not people looking for excuses. These are, these are orthodox who have stopped working completely. Their olive trees and their vineyards have produced 800 times more in the Shemitah than in previous years. And the grapes they produced were an exceptional vintage, both in quality and quantity, fulfilling Yahweh's promise concerning the sixth year in preparation for the seventh year, that he alone is their provider. Amen. Amen. So there's two groups in Israel. One is a group that is looking for escape clauses. The other group that is fully observing the Shemitah. They are graves and their olive produced 800, not 30, 60 and 100, 800 fold in the sixth year, which is enough for the sixth and the seventh year, more than enough. See? This is, this is recorded. And we'll close with this. Masei Shlichim. Acts. Masei Shlichim. Yechos Acts, Masei Shlichim, 26 and 7. Masei Shlichim, 26 and 7. See, the rabbis won't tell you this. In the Talmud, you know what they'll tell you? The rabbis, well, if the, if the people of Israel keep two Saturdays, two Shabbats in a row, the exile will end. That's a nice legend. But you know what the Torah actually says? If the people of Israel keep the Shemitah, the exile will end. Amen. You know why a lot of Jewish people have not returned? Because the rabbis are not telling them how to return. Not just the blood of Yeshua, but the Torah of Yeshua. Amen. 
I'll say it again. Not just the blood of Yeshua, but the Torah of Yeshua. Amen. How come the Jewish people haven't returned? There's only 6 million Jews in Israel out of 16 million in the world. Why? Because the Talmud tells a nice book of Maisa. What's the book of Maisa? A grandmother's tale, a fable. It's a fable. If the people of Israel will keep the Shabbat, all Jews, for two Saturdays in a row, just two, Moshiach will come and the exile will end. That's nice. That's how the Torah says. The Torah says, if you turn back to the land Sabbath, Shemitah, and give me and my land our Shabbat, then I will hear from heaven. Then you'll seek me and find me. When you search for me with all your heart, meaning when you stop making excuses why you can't. Smoke that for a while. That's what that scripture in Jeremiah 29, 13 in context is saying. When you seek me, you'll find for me. When you search for me with all your heart, meaning you're willing to do the entire Torah and not pick and choose which ones are for today and which ones are not for today. Yeshua said heaven and earth will pass away first before the smallest yud or the smallest nikuda is done away from the Torah. So instead of trying to figure out which ones are for today and which ones are for not today, let's have a different paradigm. Let's say they're all for today and if we want the full blessings of Yahweh, we'll do all of them that we can do. There's not a reason in this world that you and I cannot observe the Shemitah. Oh, there are plenty of carnal reasons. We'll lose our job, we'll lose our home, we'll lose our, our mortgage, we'll lose our insurance, we'll lose our health insurance. I can give you a whole bunch of carnal reasons. You can't give me one biblical reason. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. 26.7. See, and it's not just Ephraimites who don't receive this. The Jews don't receive this. They're busy reading the truth of the, 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 the thing in the Talmud. That says, if the Jews keep two Saturdays in a row perfect, Moshiach will come, Moshiach will come, and the exile will end. That's not what the Torah says. The Torah says, when you keep my Shabbat perfectly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You won't hear this in Jewish synagogue. You know why? Can I tell you the truth? Can we talk? We've been talking. Because the rabbis don't trust Yahweh enough. Yes. If everybody stops working in the seventh year, I can't have memberships. I can't have memberships. I can't pay the bills. I can't pay the bills. That's the end of the shul. Wrong. That's the beginning of the shul. That's how man thinks, right? That's how man thinks. I'm not saying it's easy. It's very challenging. Don't go home today and say, I'm the rabbi's a hypocrite. I'm not. I've never done this, but I'll tell you what, I wish I had some leadership so I could follow them and learn how to do it. Where are the leaders? The same place the people that are called to build hospitals, hospitals, and Nazarene Israelite Torah-based counseling, and Nazarene Israelite Torah-based deliverance, and not Assyrian medical centers where they ship us. Where are they? Where are they? You know why they're not there? Because they're not willing to obey Yahweh. But they sure know how to make matzo ball soup. <laughs> they sure know how to light havdalah. They can teach you to do a beautiful havdalah. Yeah. Do you smell it now? How about now? How about now? Can you, can you hear me and smell me now? Do you smell it? What's it? The bad. More in the sunny. The spices. I don't smell it. Now? Do you smell it now? You ever get that for havdalah? Oh, we need a new bag. Doesn't it smell nice. Do you smell it now? How about now? That's nice. That's not wrong. But are any of those who are teaching us to smell the bag of Havdalah, do any of them, can they teach us and help us to make Teshuvah, to do Shemitah, to end the exile? Uh -huh. No. You think that you go home and say, I'm telling you, this is what got us into America to begin with. God, we didn't like the paganism. He didn't like the Shabbat breaking. He didn't like, he, he didn't like any of that. But that was never listed as a reason for the exile. Never. My sexually theme 26 7. Now I stand, go back to verse 26. Rashul speaking first person. Now I stand and am judged 
for the tikvah of the promise made by Yahweh. The tikvah, what is the tikvah? The hope of the promise made by Yahweh to our avot, to our fathers. To which promise our 12 tribes diligently praying to Eloha day and night have tikvah and it will come. For which tikvah say, which hope say, Melech Agrippa, I am accused by the unbelieving Yehudi. Why would it be a thing incredible with you that Yahweh should raise the dead? I thought to myself, I should do many things contrary to the name of Yeshua of Nazareth. And so he says, why does it seem an incredible thing that Yahweh would raise Yeshua from the dead? He's saying, the fact that Yeshua has been raised from the dead is the hope of the 12 tribes. What hope? To end the exile. What is the hope of the 12 tribes? The and it's going to come about through a, a, a resurrection of Yahshua, the Mashiach, Yahweh's son, only begotten son. We're not all children of Yahweh. We're children of the devil until we're born again. Don't believe that lie. Yahweh only has one son. We are adopted. He is begotten. Amen. We are adopted. Don't ever believe that. Well, we're all children of Yahweh. That's a religious lie that needs to be parked at the curb. We are not all children. You must be born again. Yes. So the promise that our 12 tribes pray for is the tikvah, the end of the exile. And he, that's the good news, that Yeshua rose to begin the end of the exile. The bad news is, he's waiting for you to honor Yeshua. Father, we thank you. For your tongue word to us today, we thank you for the Miami Beach Israel revival. Father, we thank you for this kirilah. We thank you for those you brought to this Kihilah who are on fire, who are, who are visionary, those of Yahweh who are willing to change, to build, to move. And so, Father, we thank you you would raise up among us those who can bring solutions, those that can build the things that need to be built, and those who are willing to enter into Shemitah, as difficult as it may be, as challenging as it may be. In Yahshua's name. Okay. Just a quick calculation, 1948 to 2005 is how many years? Quickly, somebody, anyone? 1948 to 2005? How many years? You said 57? 57. 57. Okay, so divided by 7. What is the next Shemitah? 1998 was Jubilee, right? Wait a second. 1998 was the last Yovel. Seven years later is what? 2005? Yes? So that means this year is Shemitah. Uh-oh. Huh? Last year? What effect is the Jubilee? The last Jubilee was 1998. So when is the Shemitah? This year or last year? 2005. Oh well. We thought we'd have some time to prepare. Think about that. This year is Shemitah. So you ask Yahweh how you approach it. You go to cold turkey, or do you wait to the next Shemitah? But the longer we wait, the longer the exile. We love you. Peace. Shalom. CD, please. Shabbat shalom. I'm Rabbi Moshe Yosef Konachowski. I want to welcome you into our Broward County studio here, where we do most of the taping and programming for our uh, introductions and so forth and specials when it comes to our Shabbat Club and other things we do here at Your Arms to Israel. It's a blessing to have you here. I want to share with you what many of you already know and many of you are already experiencing, which is the most dynamic scriptural translation to hit the Nazarene Israelite slash Messianic marketplace uh, maybe in the last couple of decades. And some of our leading Aramaic Hebrew experts and other reviewers who are proficient in Hebrew and proficient in Aramaic have said that the Restoration Scriptures, that's right, I'm sure many of you have heard of it, received a copy, or maybe seen your friends using it, or your loved ones, or your brothers and sisters in Yeshua HaMoshiach, have heard about the Restoration Scriptures True Name Edition. We now have this Restoration Scriptures True Name Edition uh, ready. Our second printing is ready to go. We're going to be able to mail it out to you right away. Uh, usually most orders are shipped out immediately. The Restoration Scriptures True Name Edition contains 6,000 study notes, commentaries on the bottom about the scriptures, two house explanations regarding the true name of Yahweh. 
We have recovered many verses from the Dead Sea Scrolls, from the Aramaic Peshetta. More and more, we're plugging the Aramaic Peshetta, which is, in most cases, a more accurate rendering of the text, even preserving Yahweh's name in the Brit Chadashah. We've plugged that right into here. We've also taken portions of other documents, Matthew Shem Tov, Ditulay Matthew, and others uh, that we feel were legitimate to combine what we feel is one of the most dynamic translations in the world. This product is published by Your Arms to Israel Publishing, and it's being used by Yahweh in a mighty way. We have reports of pastors. We have reports of rabbis, congregations, churches that use no other translation other than the Restoration of Scripture's True Name Edition. Every time the Word of Yahweh through this Bible enters into a congregation, it literally turns it upside down and gives new insight. For instance, almost every translation in the world speaks of Yeshua dying for our sins. Baruch Hashem Yahweh, we're thankful that Yeshua did die for our sins. However, most translations, for instance, in Matthew Yahu 26 and Matthew Yahu 27, speaking of the suffering of Yeshua, when Yeshua was on the tree of sacrifice, say, quote him as saying, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabachthani, which is to say, my ale, my ale, why have you forsaken me? However, we knew that Yeshua was never forsaken by the Father. He even said that the Father is with me. You all will forsake me this night, but the Father is with me. I am not alone. He will never forsake me. But in the Aramaic, the words lemana, lemana, sabachthani do not mean my el, my el, why have you forsaken me? They mean my el, Yahweh, my el, Yahweh, why have you kept me and preserved me in this position this long? Meaning, I want to suffer, I want to die for the sins of the world, but this is taking an awfully long time. So, marvelous insights like that. Um, even in Matijahu chapter 5 and Matijahu chapter 19, where we go to the Aramaic and we show that Yeshua says, you cannot legally marry an undivorced woman. Not a divorced woman, but we match it up with the Torah. And we don't make up these verses, we take them right out of ancient sources, such as the Aramaic Peshetta, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls. So the teachings that Yeshua has in the Restoration Scriptures True Name Edition match up with the Torah and a lot of that tension between the Greek text and the Torah has been eliminated. Hardcover, leather bound, the second edition will be larger print. The footnotes have been expanded into larger font for easier reading. It's easy to carry, easy to use. It comes with a 20 page glossary lexicon in the back so you could not only learn the word of Yahweh the way it was intended to, to complement the Yahweh's full revelation, but you can also learn Hebrew while studying the restoration of scriptures. Everything you and your family and your loved ones have always wanted in the Bible, but were never able to find it. And many of us, including myself, would have to go to different sources to kind of piece things together so we can come out with a product, uh, or the knowledge, I should say, that Yahweh wanted us to have. We took a, here a little, we took there a little, and we went to different sources and resources to try to get the entire package. But now the entire package is available from Your Arms to Israel Publishing, the Restoration Scriptures, True Name Edition, Modified Second Edition. You can write to us on your address on the screen. You'll see it on our screen. Your Arms to Israel, 7378 West Atlantic Boulevard, 112, Suite 112, Margate, 33063. Or call today. We have a secure order line. All your credit card and debit card orders are secure. 305-868-8787. $60 per copy. You order 10, which is no, no big deal. You do want to get the word out. After all, this is Yahweh's word. The price goes down to $50, all the way up to 500 copies, where we can get the price down for you to $30. Call us. We'll discuss becoming a Lighthouse distributor, or you just may want a couple of copies at $60 each for your family and friends. Again, that's the Restoration Scriptures, True Name Edition. You can email us at info, and that's info at yourarmstoisrael.org. You'll see it right there on the screen. Again, that's info at yourarmstoisrael.org. And make sure to ask for the second edition, updated and modified for you, the second edition of the Restoration Scriptures, True Name Edition. Shalom, B'Shem Yahshua, Mishichem.
take your refuge in me.